Hi, I'm Aileen. In this video I'm going to introduce you to the Italian Baroque harp and I'm going to start by playing a toccata by the Neapolitan composer Ascanio Maione. The instrument that I'm playing on today is a copy of a harp that would have been seen for the first time towards the end of the 16th century in Italy. Before this, during the Renaissance period, harps generally had a single row of strings or a double row of parallel strings. But due to the changing compositional style of the time, there was a drive to create a fully chromatic harp and they achieved this by adding a third row of strings onto the double harp. And this instrument is known as an arpidopia or an Italian triple harp. Hopefully from the pegs on my soundboard you can see how this works. On the outside we have two rows of parallel strings, completely parallel, and on the inside there is a row of strings slightly offset. And the reason for this is quite simply so we can reach them from the outside.
because of course if we had three rows of completely parallel strings it would be very difficult to play the inside row. The outside two rows are doubled up so they're the same in unison and they're the same as the white notes of the piano. The inside row are the same as the black notes of the piano and they are our chromatic notes, our sharps and flats and we play them by weaving our fingers between the outside row. The other change that happened with harps at this time is they got a lot bigger and one of the main reasons for this was the addition of strings um, both in the lower range and the higher range and with with instruments like this, as you add more bass strings, the instrument has to get bigger because bass strings need to get longer as they get lower and therefore it has to increase in size. And other, other instruments had the same tr transition during the Baroque period, such as the lute. Um, the other thing that happened was with a bigger instrument, you will generally find it will be louder. So this harp was much louder than earlier harps. The addition of the extra strings made this harp much closer in range to keyboard instruments. In fact, this harp has a slightly bigger range than many of the Italian keyboards at the time. And this was great because it meant that you could play keyboard music on it. And so the next piece that I'm going to play is a piece by the Neapolitan composer Scanio Maione.
The Italian Baroque harp had two main roles during the early 17th century, as a continual instrument and a solo instrument. As a continual instrument, it was used widely across Italy, and while today it may be most often associated with Monteverdi, sources from the time show that it was used much more widely than today's usage might suggest. The reason it's so often associated with Monteverdi is because Monteverdi wrote a solo for it in his opera Orfeo in the scene Presento Spirito, and it was the first time the harp had been used in this way. And in fact, it's not dissimilar to how later composers wrote cadenzas for the harp in their operas and ballets. So perhaps this is where they got their inspiration. As a solo instrument, unfortunately, we don't have very much surviving solo music from the time. But what we do have tends to be found in collections of keyboard music. There probably wasn't much of a market for printing harp music at the time, which is probably one of the main reasons there isn't very much surviving music today. It is also thought that harpists probably played music written for other instruments such as the lute or the harpsichord. And we also know that many of the prominent harpists from the time also played keyboard instruments, so this overlap of music makes sense. The composer I wanted to focus on for this video is Escanio Meone, and he was a well-known virtuoso harpist, but he was also a very important organist in Naples in the early 17th century. And he wrote collections of keyboard music which had harp music in, it, in the collections. His keyboard music, I feel, are definitely examples of pieces that work extremely well on the harp. And I hope you'll agree that the first and the last piece that I played in this video are examples of this. The reason that I wanted to focus on Maione is because I think his music shows the versatility of this harp and also what adding the third row of strings uh, made possible on the harp. I also think that his music is incredibly beautiful and doesn't get played often enough. So the last piece I'm going to play for you is a set of variations on a Romanesque bass line by Maione. <laughs> 